At 12.45 hours on the 24th of May 1940, Adolf Hitler gave the order to halt his tanks just 15 miles from the port of Dunkirk. Long story short, this order allowed the British to evacuate their army from Dunkirk, and they lived to fight another day. At least, that is the way the story is usually told and believed. But it's not exactly true. In reality, on the 23rd of May 1940, General Oberst von Kluger halted his panzer divisions due to tactical reasons, even though the British only had one battalion in their way at the time. And when Hitler went to see von Kluger's superior, General Oberst Gerd von Rundstedt, the next day, Rundstedt advised Hitler that it would be best to consolidate the ground won rather than advance with the armour. Hitler agreed with this assessment, and long story short, the British evacuated their army out of Dunkirk to live to fight another day. At least, that is the way the story is usually told and believed. However, after the war, Rundstedt told a slightly different story. He said that he had been stopped by the Führer. My tanks were kept halted there for three days. If I had had my way, the English would not have gone off so lightly, but my hands were tied by direct orders from Hitler himself. This view is supported by Halder, who wrote in his diary, The left wing will be stopped dead in its tracks upon direct orders of the Führer. Finishing off the encircled enemy army is to be left to the Air Force. It is also supported by a lot of historians, like Shira in his book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. In the course of preparing this chapter, the author wrote to General Halder himself for further elucidation and promptly received a courteous and detailed reply. During the following days, it became known that Hitler's decision was mainly influenced by Goering. The argument goes that Hitler didn't think that the army could defeat the British, and so decided to encircle them and pound them into dust with the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe. At least, that is the way the story is usually told and believed. Even though this argument is undermined by Halder himself, who not only wrote in his diary that there were political reasons for the Holt order, but told Shira. For political reasons, Hitler did not want the decisive final battle, which inevitably would cause great damage to the population, to take place in territory inhabited by the Flemish people. He had the intention, he said, of making an independent National Socialist region out of the territory inhabited by the German-descended Flemish, thereby binding them close to Germany. His supporters on Flemish soil had been active in this direction for a long time. He had promised them to keep their land free from the damage of war. If he did not keep this promise now, their confidence in him would be severely damaged. That would be a political disadvantage for Germany, which he, as the politically responsible leader, must avoid. So, Halder argues that the army would destroy the area, and that's why Hitler decided to send in the Luftwaffe to bomb the area to smithereens. Because that wouldn't destroy the area, would it? I hate Halder. But maybe there were genuine political reasons for the Holt order. Rundstedt suspected that Hitler had wanted to help the British, based on the fact that Hitler had praised the British Empire in a meeting with him. Hitler also went on to say to Mussolini and Ciano, the Italian foreign minister, that the British Empire had to be maintained in order to create a balance of power in the world. Another general said that, when he asked Hitler why he halted the tanks, Hitler told him that he wanted to make peace with Britain. In 1945, Hitler also stated that he had, in fact, let the British leave at Dunkirk. Churchill was quite unable to appreciate the sporting spirit of which I had given proof by refraining from creating an irreparable breach between the British and ourselves. We did, indeed, refrain from annihilating them at Dunkirk. And this has led to what I'm going to call the pro-peace theory, which states that Hitler wanted peace with Britain, and so let the British army leave in the hope that this would convince Britain to give up the fight. It may be, then, though some doubt it, that Hitler restrained his armoured forces before Dunkirk in order to spare Britain a bitter humiliation and thereby facilitate a peace settlement. It would have to be, as he said, a peace in which the British left Germany free to turn once more eastward, this time against Russia. Of course, as we know, 
history lies in the heart of the debate. And some historians do not believe that the pro-peace narrative is correct, partly because it doesn't fully work with the tactical situation, since the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine were ordered to destroy the British anyway, and partly because it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, if you think about it logically, if Hitler wanted peace with Britain, then surely it would have been better to destroy or capture the British army first, and then call for peace, since without an army, Britain would then be more inclined to give in. So, by letting the army get away, that actually strengthens Britain's position, and thus encourages them to keep fighting, which is the opposite of what the theory said Hitler's intentions were. But without this theory, we're left with a vacuum, a black hole in the middle of the story, where no other current theory really fits right. In fact, this has led a lot of people to conclude that there was no clear reasoning behind the halt order. It was just a blunder. Yes, there were tactical considerations, and maybe they were the main reason they didn't advance for a day. But are those tactical reasons why the Panzers were halted for three days? Are we certain that there was no clear reasoning why something in history happened? Or is it just because we haven't figured it out yet? Okay, let's just set aside the idea that the Holt Order was purely for tactical reasons. It may have been, but let's just set that aside for the purpose of this. And let's just assume that there was some sort of clear reasoning for the Holt Order. Maybe there wasn't, but let's just assume that there was. Clearly, the answer doesn't lie at Dunkirk, otherwise we would have figured it out by now. Which means that if there was a clear reason for the Holt Order, then it's probably a bigger strategic reason, which we just haven't figured out yet. If so, then what could that reason be? The theory that is championed by some, which at least makes some sense, although it isn't supported by the evidence and many historians now dismiss it, is that Hitler wanted peace with Britain, and so let the British army get away. But as I've just explained, this doesn't make sense because if Hitler wanted Britain to give in, surely it would make more sense to destroy the British army, which would encourage Britain to seek peace. But what happens if Hitler didn't want peace? What if Hitler wanted the war with Britain to continue? And what if that was the reason Hitler let the British escape at Dunkirk? Think about it. If Hitler didn't want peace with Britain, if he wanted them to keep fighting, then when Rundstedt halted the panzers and advised about consolidating the ground, one, Hitler would agree, praise the British Empire, and give Rundstedt the impression that Hitler had wanted to help the British. This would then go in line with what Hitler said to Mussolini, etc., and later in 1945 that he wanted to help the British, he could have just told Halder and his generals that his intention was to prevent damage being inflicted on the Flemish people, since he wouldn't want to reveal to them his actual goals. Yes, the tactical situation may or may not have allowed his panzers to reach Dunkirk anyway, but that doesn't necessarily contradict what Hitler's strategic intentions were. It could have just influenced his decision or confirmed that his decision was the correct one to take. And he could still send in the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine because, while he wanted the British not to peace out, he didn't want their army to be a threat to him in the future. So, if Hitler had wanted Britain to keep fighting in 1940, then everything fits quite well together. The only question would be, why? Why would Hitler want Britain to keep fighting? The answer doesn't lie at Dunkirk. By the end of 1940, Europe is carved up into three factions. Britain holding on alone, the Axis in the centre of Europe, and the Soviet Union, currently allied, in all but name, with the Germans. But what was Hitler's long-term goal? What was the reason he wanted war in the first place? Well, I've covered this in other videos, but a quick recap. Hitler's long-term goal was to unite the German peoples under one state and go 
east to get the land and resources necessary to produce a thousand-year Reich. This was why he had Anschlussed Austria, taken down Czechoslovakia, and why he had headed into Poland, prompting the French and British to declare war. Hitler was going east, not west. He only seems to have gone west because the Allies had declared war on him. But with the West subdued at the end of 1940, and with Germany suffering under a food and fuel crisis of epic proportions, partly due to their own policies and partly the British blockade, the need to get the land and resources of the East was growing. This is why, in late 1940, Hitler ordered his generals to start planning for the invasion of the Soviet Union, because that's where he was going, the East. So you'd think that the guy in charge of the Soviet Union, Stalin, would know that Hitler was coming, right? You'd think that there's no way that Stalin would be surprised by the German invasion. And yet, this is exactly what happened. Stalin was shocked when the Germans invaded in 1941. So why? Why was Stalin shocked? It was obvious to everyone else, pretty much, that Hitler was going east. Oswald Mosley knew that Hitler was going east because he'd read Mein Kampf. Friedrich Kellner, a social democrat living in the Third Reich, had also read Mein Kampf and knew that Hitler was going east, even as early as 1939. In fact, anyone who read Mein Kampf would know what Hitler's intentions were. So there's no way that anyone could have been surprised by this unless you didn't think Hitler would attack yet. Everyone knew that Hitler was going east. But when was he going east? In hindsight, we know that he attacked in 1941, but that's with hindsight. There's no way to know when Hitler was going to attack the Soviet Union. Many still argue that Hitler should have waited until 1942 before he attacked, although I would argue that the food and oil crisis demanded that he attack in 1941. But the point is that attacking in 1941 was not a guaranteed thing and is questionable even with hindsight. The timing of the invasion of the Soviet Union was the thing that nobody could foresee. Few at the time knew that Hitler would attack the Soviet Union in 1941. Instead, many were looking at one of the key indicators. And that indicator was saying, there's no way that Hitler would attack now. Stalin was looking at this indicator and knew that, so long as this remained true, there's no way that Hitler would attack. And what was that indicator? Well, everyone knows it. We've all heard it a million times. Hitler would not dare risk a war on two fronts. So long as Germany remained at war with Britain, Hitler would not dare attack the Soviet Union because he wouldn't risk a war on two fronts. And Hitler didn't want a war on two fronts because of what happened in the First World War, and it even goes beyond that. So, if you're Stalin, and you're allied with Hitler in all but name, and Hitler is still at war with Britain, and you know that Hitler wouldn't dare risk a war on two fronts, which was actually what Stalin thought at the time, why would you expect Hitler to go to war with you in 1941? You wouldn't. Stalin expected that Germany would end the war in the West before entering any conflict with Russia. And Hitler knew this. Hitler knew that nobody thought he would fight a war on two fronts. So, as long as Hitler remained at war with Britain, Hitler knew that his main enemy, Stalin, would think that Hitler wouldn't go to war with him. And, so long as Hitler remained at war with Britain, Hitler could take Stalin by surprise, giving the Germans the advantage in the early part of the invasion of the Soviet Union. Imagine it this way. If you're Stalin and you see Germany and Britain make peace, and you know that Hitler's ultimate aim is to take the land and resources of the East, you know that Hitler will now be coming your way. So you'll prepare for this. And Hitler knows that if he makes peace with Britain, then Stalin will know he's coming. 
and would prepare for him. So, the last thing that Hitler wants is peace with Britain, because that would be a big red flag to Stalin, warning him of the incoming German attack. So, in reality, rather than seeking peace, Hitler actually wants Britain to keep fighting in the 1940-41 to period, at least up until the invasion of the Soviet Union. After that, then peace with Britain might be acceptable. But you might say, okay, great theory, but where's the evidence for this? Well, for starters, we have Dunkirk, where Rundstedt said he got the impression that Hitler wanted to help the British. We have Hitler's own testimony about this in 1945, and his words with Mussolini and others. We also have Hitler's reaction to the Hess flight. I'm not going to get into the rabbit hole of the Hess affair here, Although I think the timing of this event, if it was a destabilization attempt to overthrow the British monarchy or government, actually supports my theory. But what I will say is that Hitler's reaction to this, faked or not, was to declare Hess a madman and promise Stalin that he wasn't going to make peace with Britain. It's not clear if this was the original text of the message sent, but supposedly here is Hitler's letter to Stalin. Dear Mr. Stalin, I am writing this letter at the moment of having finally concluded that it will be impossible to achieve a lasting peace in Europe, not for us, not for future generations, without the final shattering of England and her destruction as a state. As you well know, I long ago made the decision to carry out a series of military measures to achieve this goal. The closer the hour of a decisive battle, however, the larger the number of problems I face. For the mass of the German people, no war is popular, especially not a war against England, because the German people consider the English a fraternal people and war between them a tragic event. I will not conceal that I have felt the same way and have several times offered England humane peace terms, taking into consideration England's military situation. However, insulting replies to my peace proposals and the continuing expansion by the English of the field of military operations with the obvious intention of drawing the entire world into war persuade me that there is no other way out of this situation except for an invasion of the Isles and the decisive destruction of that country. In order to organise troops for the invasion away from the eyes of the English opponents, and in connection with the recent operations in the Balkans, a large number of my troops, about 80 divisions, are located on the borders of the Soviet Union. This possibly gave rise to the rumours now circulating of a likely military conflict between us. I assure you, on my honour as a Chief of State, that this is not the case. From my side, I also react with understanding to the fact that you cannot completely ignore these rumours and have also deployed a sufficient number of your troops on the border. In this situation, I cannot completely exclude the possibility of an accidental outbreak of armed conflict, which, given the conditions created by such a concentration of troops, might take on very large dimensions, making it difficult, if not impossible, to determine what caused it in the first place. I want to be absolutely candid with you. I fear that some of my generals might deliberately embark on such a conflict in order to save England from its fate and spoil my plans. It is a question of no more than a month. By approximately 15th to 20th of June, I plan to begin a massive transfer of troops to the west from your borders. In connection with this, I ask you as persuasively as possible not to give in to any provocations that might emanate from those of my generals who might have forgotten their duty. And, it goes without saying, try not to give them any cause. If it becomes impossible to avoid provocation by some of my generals, I ask you to show restraint, to not respond, but to advise me immediately of what has happened through the channel known to you. Only in this way can we attain our mutual goals, on which, it seems to me, we are clearly in agreement. I thank you for having agreed with me on the question known to you, and I ask you to forgive me for the method I have chosen for delivering this letter to you as quickly as possible. I continue to hope for our meeting in July. Sincerely yours, Adolf Hitler. Why would Hitler promise Stalin that he wasn't going to make a separate peace with Britain? Just think about that for a second. What would drive Hitler to write a letter to Stalin promising him that he wouldn't make peace with Britain. The only reason that makes logical sense 
is that Hitler knew that if Stalin suspected that Hitler wanted peace with Britain, that this would tell Stalin that Hitler was going east. So Hitler had to convince Stalin that he wasn't wanting peace with Britain, and that's why he wrote the letter. At the same time, the British were wanting to break up the Axis Soviet Pact and used the Hess affair to their advantage, whispering in Stalin's ear that Hitler, or at least some members of the National Socialist Party, were wanting to go east. The message that Stalin and his cohorts duly gleaned was that Hess, and by extension Hitler, was trying to woo the British, and that if Moscow was not careful, it could find itself facing the Nazis alone. As Khrushchev noted in his memoirs, the idea of Hess's flight being unauthorized by Berlin was unthinkable. In addition, he knew that Sir John Simon had been involved in the debriefing of Hess would have worried Moscow deeply. After all, Simon was viewed by many on the left as one of the architects of appeasement and avowed man of Munich. Regardless of whether the Hess affair was a planned coup attempt by Hitler and certain members of the royal family in Britain, whose documents on the case remained locked away in the Royal Archives 80 years after the events in question, being exempt from the Public Records Act of 1958 and the Freedom of Information Act of 2000, with William Hague being the last politician to confirm that the documents would remain sealed for national security reasons. Regardless of that, Stalin did, in fact, believe that the Hess affair was an anti-Soviet conspiracy. So, for the purposes of this discussion, it doesn't matter what the Hess affair was actually about. All that matters is that, as a result of the Hess affair, Hitler had to persuade Stalin that he wasn't seeking peace with Britain. And this suggests that Hitler didn't want peace with Britain in the 1940-1941 period prior to the invasion of the Soviet Union, because if he got peace with Britain, this would tell Stalin that Hitler was on his way. Hitler's madness derangement alibi would supposedly cover why Hess chose to do what he did, and thus allay any suspicions the Russians might have that an Anglo-German peace was being negotiated before an eastward invasion was mounted. If this is the case, that Hitler wanted to keep Britain in the war in the 1940-41 period, and it makes sense, then, why he would still want to do some damage to the British army in its evacuation from Dunkirk. He sent in the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine to do a lot of damage to the British because, while Hitler wanted Britain to keep fighting, he didn't want them to have the ability to harm him in return. It would make sense to cripple the British army and prevent it from doing any damage to Germany in the short term, while he took the living space of the East. Now... <laughs> I would like to make this absolutely clear, this isn't a hill that I'm willing to die upon. This is more of an alternative theory, which may or may not stand up to scrutiny in the long run. But I wanted to offer it to you because the current explanation about what happened at Dunkirk doesn't sit right with a lot of people, me included. Yes, it could just be that the Holt order was done for purely tactical reasons. But I also think there's some merit to the idea that if Hitler peaced out with Britain, Stalin would know that Hitler was coming for him. It would also fit in line with some of the better theories on the Hess affair, which happened on the eve of the invasion of the Soviet Union. So let's see what you guys think. Did Hitler want to keep the British in the war? Was this the reason for the Dunkirk Holt order? Thanks for watching. Bye for now.